All right, this video I'm gonna talk to you about solving for X and Y intercepts if a line is horizontal or, <coughs> excuse me, horizontal or vertical and uh, how to get the equation in slope intercept form. So you guys should remember from algebra because you spent about 180 days out of 185 days talking about slope intercept form. It's Y equals MX plus B where M is the slope and B is the y-intercept. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I have an equation that's not uh, the y by itself and everything else on the right-hand side, <coughs> excuse me, of the equation, then it's not in slope-intercept form. So if I have something like 2x plus 3y equals 12, I want to get it into slope-intercept form to help me graph it. In order to get this into slope intercept form, I need to isolate this y. To isolate the y, I'm gonna undo everything that's happening to the y right now. So I'm gonna ask myself, what's happening to the y right now? Well, to the y, I am multiplying by three, and I am adding two x. So I wanna do the opposite of multiplying by three and adding two x. Remember when we're trying to solve uh, we do the reverse order of operations. So we're going to get rid of the addition first. To get rid of this addition, I'm going to subtract 2x from each side. 12 minus 2x, those are not like terms. This is a constant and this, this has a variable. So I'm just going to put 12 minus 2x. Now I want to eliminate the multiplying by 3. To eliminate multiplication, I divide. Division property of equality says I can divide as long as I divide everything in the equation. Y equals 4 minus 2 thirds X. Now slope intercept form says that I want the slope first and the Y intercept second. So I'm going to reverse the order of this. When I reverse the order of it, it keeps its sign. So this is negative, it's going to be negative here. This is positive, it's going to be positive here. So that's solving for the Y. I got the Y by itself. And now I, now I can graph it or do whatever else I need to do. To graph this, I'm just going to start at the y-intercept, which is 4. I'm going to go up 2 and to the left 3 because it's negative. And then I connect those two points. I do a poor job of connecting them, but I do connect them. Now, any point on the line, uh, any two points on the line have a slope of negative 2 thirds. So if I went down 2 and to the right 3 here, I still would have been on that line. From this one, if I go down two and to the right three here, I'm still gonna be on the line. So from any, any two points, the slope is the same. In order to graph it, if I have just a point and the slope, I can graph it out. Meaning if I have something like, it tells me it goes through two, three and has a slope of one half, I can go to that point two, three, and then I can go up one and over two, and then connect them. So any point and the slope makes it so you can graph it. Now we won't always want to get it in slope intercept form because sometimes we'll want to actually know the x and y intercepts and, and not just the y intercepts. So if I have it in standard form and I want to figure out the x intercept, at every x intercept always every single time, an x intercept is where it crosses this line, at every single x intercept the y value is zero. No matter where it crosses this line, y is zero. So I don't know what this point is, but I know it's zero. It's something comma zero. This one, same thing, something comma zero. This one, something comma zero. This one, something comma zero. I know that at every single one of these x-intercepts, y is zero. So that means if I'm trying to solve for the x-intercept, I can plug in zero for y. So I just plug in zero and then solve for x. So I have two x plus zero equals 12. 2x plus 0 is just 2x. When you add 0, it's nothing, so it doesn't do anything. And then I divide, and I get x equals 6. Now, I can't just write this as x equals 6. This is a point, and I need to put it as a point. 6 comma 0. That is the point. Now, at every single y-intercept ever, always, in the history of time, x is always 0. On all of these, I don't know what the y is, but I know that x is 0. So it's 0 comma something. This one, 0 comma something. This one, zero comma something. 
I don't know what the y is, but I know that the x is 0. So if I want to find the y-intercept, I can plug in 0 for x. 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 13. Oh, sorry, 12. 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 3y is just 3y. Divide by 3. y equals 4. But this is also a point. It's 0, comma, 4. So if I want to graph it using these two points, I'm going to go to 6, 0. Make that point, and I'm going to go to 0, 4. Make that point, and connect them. You can always make a line with any two points. The only thing that's left is vertical and horizontal. So if it tells me x equals some number, think about it on a graph. If x equals 3, that's a straight up and down line right here. This is a vertical line. If it tells me x equals negative 2, it's right here. Straight up and down, this is also vertical. So what does that mean? That means anytime you have x equals some number, it's going to be vertical. Anytime x equals some number and nothing else, it's going to be a vertical line. If it tells me y equals 3, go to right here and I make a straight across line, which is horizontal. If it tells me y equals negative 2, go to right here, make a straight across line, horizontal. So that means every single time it tells me y equals some number, it's going to be horizontal. And that's how you can tell. If it says x equals, it's vertical. If it says y equals, it's horizontal. And that's it.